What's up guys, JR Riemann back again, and today I'm actually coming to you from Total Sports. I believe I'm in Mount Clemens, Michigan. I think that's where we are. I think that's about where it's at. Maybe it's Harrison Township. Doesn't matter, you guys know. Look it up in Michigan. Total Sports, they stayed open throughout the shutdowns and everything. Um, still running everything here in Michigan as well uh, with all the ordinances and everything in order there. So uh, just make sure if you're in the area, come check out Total Sports. I think this might be one of my new favorite places to be, uh, but today, I'm gonna take a look at a couple different balls, but first up, we're gonna take a look at that new Rubicon uh, from Rotogrip, the new Pearl version of that ball. So we're gonna take it out here. It is a little bit of a beat up pattern. I have some shots on this pair already, um, but it gives you an opportunity to see something just a little bit different than what you would normally see. So we're gonna take it out here. Uh, it seems to be about 42 feet. I can't tell you for sure. I don't know the people that run the place, but we're gonna take it out and see what she's got here in a minute. Stay tuned. take this Rubicon and we're gonna try to I mean try to give you as good a look as we possibly can we're on a little bit of a, a beat up league condition I uh, have bowled on league it had three games on it yesterday so I'm gonna try and see if it'll see if it'll try to play that 8 9 10 range first well you could see it hooked immediately and then I just bailed the rest of the way. So that wasn't a bad sign, but probably not a very good sign either right away. So I'm gonna, I think the next few shots are probably gonna hook a bunch because now we're gonna be into that, that league area. We won't call it the track. We don't wanna make anybody mad, but we're gonna be in that league starting area between 12 and 15. Yeah, so it's gonna hook a bunch from there because that's where everybody started league. But the key thing you wanna pay attention to is that one didn't actually, like, it didn't stop, it didn't hook stop. It was just a, uh, we got reset buttons here? Yeah, we do, all right, cool. Uh, but it doesn't work. I guess we're shooting spares. I need to practice on my spares anyway. Um, but the, the thing to pay attention to is to make sure the ball doesn't hook stop. Like you're not seeing some dramatic motion right away and then seeing it just kind of look like it's bailing the rest of the way. That, for that last shot looked like it actually started to read and then continued to go through the pin deck as well. So let's go five more left. Now we're going to try to get to that 16, 17 range. Yeah, so that's pretty good. This is probably the area where they start, they kind of finished up league last night. Um, started a little bit straighter, 12, 13, 14, probably finished the night at, you know, 16, 17, 18. Some guys probably got a little bit further left, but you can see that one looked really good. Went through the pens perfect. You can see how clean it is through the front now that we're in the oil. So I'm just gonna go three more left. See what 18, 19 looks like. Ah, okay, so I got that one a little right. That one hit, you know, 17 and a half, 17 board, we'll call it. And it overhooked. So, but it was, again, it was a continuous overhook. It wasn't anything crazy. Shoot the spare. So now we'll probably get to a spot where uh, the lanes, where somebody was probably bowling, probably a higher rev guy or gal, was already in at that 19, 20 range. So I'm gonna move another three left, try to get to that 19, 20 area and see if we can get the ball to go through the pins. Perfect. 
Perfect, perfect. Now, I mean, I, I'll be curious. I've thrown this ball a little bit in other places, and it wasn't silly down lane. Um, and anybody that had the, the original Rubicon, you knew it wasn't a silly, you know, sh silly strong ball either. Uh, it was just a really, for me, the Rubicon was more like a benchmark than anything. Um, and this is just going to be, I think, for those patterns where they transition a little bit and you still need a good mid lane reaction, but you need something a little cleaner to the front, that's where this ball comes into play. So I'm going to move a few more left. I'm going to have to slow down because they are tight down lane. Oh, <laughs> that's not a good one to get on video because <laughs> that didn't get to the right. That one never got to the dry. But you can see how cliff they are. So for anybody that doesn't know, the cliff means there's just a lot of oil in the middle and then there's a cliff. It just falls off to where it just, it's bone dry. So that's what they mean by cliff. Let's see if I can get close to making this. This one's tough. You gotta get that four pin to bounce off the wall if you can get the ball in between the four and the five. Ah, just like that. <laughs> so we're going to, at least my spare game's good, shoot. So we're going to, uh, I'm gonna stay in that same spot, but I'm gonna have to move my eyes a little to the right <laughs> to get the ball to, to read. Otherwise I'd have to really slow down and that would be a little crazy. See if that'll hook. Yeah, it's better, but that's where the flat 10 comes in. So if I want to get the flat 10 out, I would have to throw it dead to the right. Um, so we will. We'll actually, we'll move a few left and we'll throw it into the dry and watch it hook. Oh gosh. Almost missed that. After I was just talking about my spare game being on point, almost missed a, a single pin. All right, so I'm gonna go a few more left and we're just gonna go around the lane. A few more left, go around the lane, see if it'll get through the pins. Ooh, too far to the right, got that too far right. So this is where I struggle on the lead conditions. You know, I mean, it's just because I see that. I see the overhook when I throw it to the dry, underhook when I throw it into the oil. Yeah, let's see if I can make this. Spare game on point. I think we're ready to go for next weekend. As long as they don't turn into a cliff. <laughs> All right, let me try that again. I'm gonna get up against the ball return. I'll just get it to the right later, not so early. Let's see if that does it. That was closer. That was better. But you can see how it really wants to read that dry. It really wants to see the friction there. And it, it does a pretty good job. I can tell you, I definitely like this better than the original one. Just because this one is clean. It gets through the front a whole lot better. So that's always a good sign. All right, so I will, I'm gonna try this again. I'm gonna try this again and I'm going to move my eyes just one more left and see if it'll get through there. Now we went to a wrap 10. So that's where the, the difficulty comes in. Now I guess I could make my hand get around it a little bit more. But actually, you know what? Let's try the, let's try the slow down technique see if we can keep the ball in the oil and just slow down. 
and see if it'll pick up the lane properly and go through the pins. Yeah, like that. So that's your options. For me, it's always been tightening the angles up and doing that. For a lot of other people, they just move left and they throw it to the dry. And they see the success. They see what they want to see out of it, which is always a good thing, you know? So it's just different for everybody. There's not a, a single move that's going to work for everybody. It's not a universal move. All right, we're going to get in front of the ball return now. Now I'm going to have to throw it to the right, maybe. I don't know. I'm just going to throw it and see what happens. Will that hook? Yes, it will. I'm going to hook too much. But you can see the reaction out of this. So this is still going to be a really, really good bowling ball. It's what you expect out of rotor grip. I mean, they've come out with so many good things, so many good bowling balls lately that, you know, it's it's hard to it's hard to say that a bowling ball from them is ever going to not match up for someone, you know? So. But let me, uh, I'll show you an example. I got a Hustle Link sitting here too, which is technically a lower end piece for them. So I'm gonna try and throw it in that area and you can kind of see the difference in ball reaction between the Rubicon and, and it's a Rubicon UC2 by the way, and a Hustle Link, original Hustle Link. So in reality, the Hustle Link should not go through the pins, but you never know. See, so that's the difference there. So the hustle link, a much lower end piece, much weaker bowling ball. You watch it just float, 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 float. And the Rubicon actually has that stronger engine, stronger cover, and actually picks up. All right, there you go. So that's that Rubicon, the new UC2. Oh, it's, that's kind of cool. UC2. Like, you see me too? Like, you see, I don't know, whatever. That's the new Rubicon. Uh, look really good. I mean, even on the beat up condition, you could see it really still wants to get up in the middle of the lane and down lane. Still clean through the front. It allowed me to play straighter. I was able to do pretty much whatever I wanted to the further left part of the lane as well. So uh, this is going to be one of those balls that everybody's pretty much going to like. Um, anybody that liked the Rubicon, you'll probably like this better because it's going to be a little bit cleaner. Unless you're a lower rev rate, then you like that stronger piece, the solid cover. You know, it's completely up to you. For me, I like this better than the original one. Uh, so make sure to head over to BowlerX.com and get yours today. There's going to be a link in the description for you. So head over there. Um, and I guess that's all I got for you. So make sure uh, this weekend, tomorrow, I know that I'm going to post this later today. So tomorrow, you, uh, we're bowling in Lansing. So head over to my channel, the JR Raymond channel. Click that join button. I'm going to be live on there. But you have to be a member. It's $4.99 for members. So make sure to head over there. Uh, and until tomorrow, we'll see you guys later. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.